we're going to set up and run our finger joint cutter now. Typical applications will be for joining segments into arch headrails, and the 11 millimeter fingers are long enough for joining parts end to end into longer lengths that are going to be further planed or profiled. The adjustable shoulder cutter on the top provides a nice clean joint at the face of the material. Our finger joint cutter is a two element assembly. You can see on the drawing that the fingers have a six millimeter pitch from each other. The minimum thickness dimension is specified at 14 millimeters. After that, we can raise the position of the top shoulder cutter in multiples of six millimeters, all the way to a 76 millimeter maximum width thickness. At any of the intermediate spacer positions, you can use whatever wood thickness is applicable, equalizing the shoulder depth as required by moving the machine spindle up or down. Today, we're working with stock that's about 20 millimeters in thickness, and then we're going to adjust the tool to mill heavier stock at around 50 millimeters. For the thinner material, we could choose to close the tool elements right down together with no spacers. That joint would have two fingers with vertical shoulders of just over seven millimeters on each face. Or we could insert one of the six millimeter spacers that come with the tool, and this would add a finger in the joint, and then we would have vertical shoulders of just over four millimeters on each face. So think about the number of fingers you want to have in the joint to maximize glue line versus the best shoulder thickness for the piece you're making. We're gonna go with an extra finger and leave one six millimeter spacer between the two tool elements. It's important to restack the remaining six millimeter spacers onto the sleeve above the top cutter element. That will ensure secure clamping when you tighten the spindle nut. It is important to center the finger joint portion in the wood thickness and to equalize the shoulder heights, top and bottom. Then the faces will be flush and this will allow for minimal cleanup planing after glue up. As with the other tools, Offset the infeed fence back at least one millimeter so that you know you have a full cut across the edge of the material.